Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is what patriotism means to me. Most people may not know what the Pledge of Allegiance means. Neither did I until my seventh grade teacher had informed me. They translated it into words where to find the meaning of each line. The citizen reciting it is saying that they promise to be faithful to the emblem that stands for and represents our country of 50 states. Yet formed into one union, they pledge their loyalty to the government that it itself is a republic, a form of people that are of supreme rule which is under the divine providence of God and cannot be divided, where each citizen has the freedom of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and with each person being entitled to be treated justly, fairly, and according to proper law and principle. To sum this up, it is saying that each equal citizen is pledging to stand with and for their own country, and being proud to be able to do so. The flag's colors have meaning too. Red symbolizes hardness and valor meaning the ability to endure difficult con conditions with great courage in the face of danger. White symbolizes purity and innocence. Blue symbolizes vigilance, perseverance, and justice. They come from which the Founding Fathers had served under or had been exposed to. There are many more American and military traditions with meanings behind them, such as the way an honor guard folds the American flag at a military funeral 13 times, each time having a meaning behind it. The 21 gun salute stands for the sum of the year 1776 and how the American flag should never touch anything beneath it. Patriotism is very important to me and my family. A few have served, which I am proud to say. Many people I know continue to remind me of the privileges we own as Americans and I am daily thankful for the rights I have. Our country has been through tough times to gain both freedom and justice for everyone and that I am willing to stand up for. Veterans Day originated as Armistice Day and marked the end of hostilities of World War I. That occurred on the 11th day of the 11th month. Therefore, the day is always recognized on November 11th, regardless of the day of the week it falls on. The day was originally set aside to honor the veterans of World War I. In 1938, it was made a legal federal holiday for all. However, after World War II and the Korean War, Congress recognized a need to expand the meaning of the day to recognize all of our veterans and not just those of World War I. In 1954, the word armistice was replaced with veterans as a way to formally include all veterans of the American Wars on the Day of Remembrance. Hi, my name is David Sane. So we're going to talk today, I'm going to talk today about my experiences in Vietnam. I was drafted in 1966 on, on Valentine's Day. My father took me to the Newton area where you were supposed to check in and I was immediately processed and taken to uh, Fort Jackson. On the way down there we had to learn our service number. US 53424072, sir, that's the number. It's still in my head. So from there, uh, did basic training, and then I was sent to Fort Eustis, Virginia, and worked in the motor pool. Well, I never did get advanced training because when I was 14 years old, I could overhaul the car engine. All I had to do was go in and learn the mechanical terminology which was different. They called clutch play free travel and TI was technical inspections. From that, I learned those two things and I was turned loose. So then I was sent immediately to, it was to, to get Fort Lee, Virginia for immediate departure to South Vietnam. So checked in there and a motor sergeant was there at headquarters platoon where I was and he asked me to uh, my background and everything, I said, well, I could overhaul a car engine. He said, you're going to run the motor pool. So I ran the motor pool. And we were training, getting ready to go. Uh, we were a five, 508 quartermaster supply company. We supplied the fuel for the whole south. So we left for Vietnam. Uh, it was on a slope, 
plane, cross country, prop plane, and we got on a boat. We were on a ship for 28 days. So we got to Vietnam. I ran the motor pool. I would go up and down the Mekong Delta with 10,000 gallons of fuel and to check our equipment in those territories down south of where Vong Tau was. And so it got very intriguingly interesting because all the Viet Cong had to do was throw a grenade in that Navy vessel and I would have been sand at the bottom of the Mekong Delta Ocean. Anyway, so uh, best story I can tell you about is uh, we were processing out to leave Vietnam, five of my guys and myself. We were uh, uh, supposed to leave the next morning, which we did, and we got on a chopper, and it was about a 30-minute flight to Tonsonuk Air Base, where General Westmoreland was. In flight, we had bullet, bullets, bullet holes come and appear in the plane. It was sort of frightening. When we landed, they put us on a bus and we had to lay in the floor and the, the driver of the bus was in a triple wall steel cage. He took us in, which is about a third of a mile to the base. We were trapped there for three days. Uh, since General Westmoreland was there, the intent of the Viet Cong was to uh, kill, kill him, take him out. So, this was during the Tet Offensive. Now a lot of people don't know what that is. That's when that was the biggest buildup of the war. The Viet Cong threw everything they had anywhere at us, and it was pretty bad. So I was able, me, my guys and I were able to get on a jet three days later, and we were taking off. And Ken Burns production, it's on, it's on video that he did produce Thompson Nuke Air Base. It was February 5th, 6th, or 7th, and uh, we were taking off, and a mortar round came in and knocked a big hole in the runway, and the pilot, somehow or another, miraculously got us around that hole, and we took off and came back to uh, Okinawa, refuel Atlanta, landed in uh, Hawaii, landed in California, got off the bus. People were rude. People were treating us like criminals. Uh, um, because a few troops in Vietnam made some mistakes, but most of us were there to try to save that country from communism. That was the whole purpose that we were there, and we did our best. I think often of the men that we had down in the jungle area. All of us were in a jungle area uh, somewhat, but this was deeper jungle, and I knew personally three of the people uh, one of them was from Hickory. And I communicated with all those people over years. There's no one left. Every one of them has, has died from Agent Orange issues. So it's uh, that. When the government decided to produce, how deep the uh, product produced, they said we want to kill everything. Well, they did a pretty good job. Uh, and I don't mean that ugly. I mean, it just. It, they weren't thinking about how it would impact the soldiers. So that's a bad situation that developed from that decision. Agent Orange continues to be an issue with all of us. They sprayed this foliage all over. We were on a, in a mountain, mountainous area. Then the water would come down the mountains and the streams. They would filter the water with a, a, a water truck filtering device they didn't take, they took the trash out. They didn't take any chemicals out. So we drank, that was our water. That was our water supply. And shower and everything else. So it was a different experience. Now I often reflect back during that period of time, that day, thinking about my buddies that didn't make it home or, or died after they got home. Or, it's, uh, it's a humble, respectful feeling that I have for that, that and all the troops that served. Oh,
Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner almost 200 years ago. He called America the land of the free and the home of the brave. Throughout this nation's history, Americans, soldiers, sailors, mar marines, airmen, and coast guards have bravely answered the call to defend our freedom and to aid our friends and allies to turn back to against aggressors. We can never fully repay our debt of gratitude to more than 650,000 American service members who died in combat, or the 1.5, 1.4 million who are wounded. We can, however, recognize and thank 25 million veterans still living today. Today is our privilege to say thank you to all American veterans, to let them know that we appreciate them. The price of freedom is high. We cannot afford to forget those willing to pay it. Today we celebrate America's veterans for keeping this nation, the land of the free, and the home of the brave. On behalf of North Davie Middle School, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.